I think we get this sense that tech is only for young people. And it's almost as though uh, somebody who's in their 50s at plus, 60s, 70s, even 40s, I'll, I'll, I'll see this. It's almost as if it's okay and it's culturally f- normal to slowly not understand technology. What's up? What's up? What's up with that? I think if anyone were over a teenager and saying they didn't really understand technology or there's technologies they wish they understood, you know, they would be they would be dishonest if they weren't saying there's technologies I would like to learn or things I don't understand because it's moved so fast. Technology has moved faster in the past 10 years than in the previous 50. You know, it's really, really a part of our daily lives now. So, so part of that is is just the is this the industry of technology has exploded in the last you know, again ten twenty thirty thirty right. years. Well, well, personal technology has particularly exploded. Yes. So, where did you so tell our audience about so that you solve for something that we see every day, which is I'm I'm you know again I remember ten years ago twenty years ago when I was first in the in the investment business, people struggling with email. And yeah. thinking, wow, this uh, this whole email thing is so complicated, and then it just is just continue to roll on. That that Snapchatting is, you know, and Snapface is so difficult. How do the kids do it? Right. Um, and and this is for a lot of reasons. You've got this rapidly evolving technology. Now the next thing is, you know, Facebook is no longer in the. You know, they're gonna they've changed to the metaverse. Right. That's hard to even understand. Right. We're gonna go into this new virtual world, I guess. But. You started a company called Teen Years. Am I pronouncing it right? Yes, sir. Tell, tell me how you, how you started doing that. What's Tell me about Teen Years. So Teen Years got started. It was inspired by my own mom. My mom's 82. She loves technology in that she likes reading CNN on her phone, playing words with friends on her Kindle, checking out Facebook photos of our family. She also hates it several times a month when her kids get the call. You know, Gmail loses her password, Microsoft loses her documents, and we can't always be there to help. And I noticed this particularly when I moved back to New Mexico, which is my home state, Um, moving back as a new mom, I just saw this great digital divide. Um, But really with everyone, it's, it's, it's all of us are running to catch up with how technology works and the new technologies out there. So as you can imagine, mom was not alone. There's over 65 million my moms, you know, just in the U.S., by 2030, more than 30 percent of New Mexicans will be um, age 60 plus. And this is the case everywhere. Our our elder population is growing like crazy. Um, Social isolation is a is a huge epidemic, actually, for more than just the older populations. And so for for these people and those of us who love them, um, we created Teen Years, which is tech savvy teens and young adults helping seniors or any age person learn technology through one-on-one personalized coaching. Um, So whether that's a smartphone, a computer, an app, our goal is to empower older adults to connect with their loved ones, engage with their communities and the world through technology while providing paid, meaningful jobs for teens and young adults. Okay, so so tell me about, uh, give me an example of a family and how, how you would be able to implement this. And I know that this is, you started this in New Mexico, and where is it now available today? So virtually, it's available all around the globe. We can help v- anyone virtually. around the right. We can help anyone around the globe over Zoom, FaceTime, any kind of video platform. In person, it's still in New Mexico right now, and I look forward to it growing at some point. Um, so, Teen Years works in a few ways. Pre-pandemic, it was one hundred percent in-person coaching. And we do that in person in our office space downtown, in seniors' homes, whether like because we have older seniors, um, at senior centers, libraries, wherever they would like to meet. Once COVID hit, as you can imagine, it was really fun suggesting to people, let's do this, let's do this in a video platform online. We know you know I don't, don't know how to get on the internet, but it was quite a learning <laughs> curve teaching everyone that. So we started moving to virtual, and then we started getting calls because NPR had just done a great piece on teen years, and then we started getting calls from around the country. And so we started helping people in New York and Florida and where, wherever, and then even in England. So as the restrictions have started lifting, we've started doing in-person again, and now we're doing both. 
so we can do group events, private sessions, et cetera. Okay, so so the huge demand, this huge divide here. I mean, I think even my in my neighborhood, there's a in the neighborhood next door applicate app that you guys um, is it, you familiar yeah. with next door? Yes, sir. I, I remember frequently people saying and posting, "Hey, does, can somebody help me figure out my computer?" Right, which is like it's a, it's an interesting uh, economic niche that hasn't quite been filled perfectly because. It's pretty expensive to have a technology consulting company. It's right. uh, it, it's not super lucrative if somebody who's like, hey, can you come just help me fix my computer? Like, what is that? What are you really going to charge for that? Is it is it fifty bucks, which is makes it for di- makes for difficult business? If it's fifteen hundred bucks, it's like, wait a minute, I can't afford that. It's more expensive right. than my computer. So how do you like? It's been a hard economic model to figure out in in America yeah. because. So well, how have you guys done I'm, this, and how I'm do you so figure it out? I'm so glad you said that, Wes. Nobody ever brings that up because everyone's so excited about what we're doing that nobody realizes. Like, you know, I'm certainly not paying myself what I'm worth yet, <laughs> and that's because you're right. What people can afford isn't what really brings in you know, paying all these expenses and paying necessarily, well, at least what I'm worth, the kids get paid what they're worth because they're getting like 15 bucks an hour, 16 bucks an hour. But I just wanted to see this exist. And when I started it, especially as a new mom, I couldn't really like do something else at the same time. I used to work in the film industry for 13 years and I wanted to really devote my time to bettering our community. So, So we've been able to succeed as a small business is how I started it, as an LLC. But in no time, we realized how many people couldn't afford to pay. I don't know where it is, how it is where you are, but New Mexico is one of the most impoverished states in the country. And so we, I never have once turned anyone away. I will find the money to help them. So in the beginning, I would just pay 18 years out of my pocket and be like, let's help this person. What about the imp- so? What are the what is the impact on you know? We take it for granted. I take technology to some extent and figuring it out, uh, pr- very much for granted. Like it's an iPhone. It's just use it. It just works. Yeah, <laughs> uh, right. And Gmail, just use it. It works. Uh, and we take it for granted. But the impact on seniors. Oh gosh, Trish. Yeah, we have an impact that goes way beyond selling a product or a service. You know, we address documented needs in our society, like social isolation youth unemployment, intergenerational learning and connections. One client put it best when she said, teen years helps us participate in the world instead of just being spectators. Um, I have countless stories because I'm really big on measuring what matters. So I measure what matters in my own life, like getting quality time with my little girl. I measure what matters to our clients in that we try to survey every person we work with. We have about 10 questions, you know, what could we be doing better? Rate this or that from one to five. Do you have any comments for us, et cetera, et cetera. And then I do the same thing with our coaches. And what has come from all of that over the years has been astounding. Like um, we have a coach who I was getting ready to let him go because he, he'd run late or, or pulled a no-show for three you know, group events in a row. And when I reached out to him, he basically said, please don't fire me. You know, teen years is the reason I wake up in the morning. Mm. I, I will give me another shot. So that's happened. Like where I've seen a serious impact on their self-confidence, their mental health. Um, By the way, why was he late? Why did he miss? I think he was, he was in depression. You know, he was a college mm. kid and he admitted what he was going through. I won't share all that here, but he was just depressed. And he was like, I, you're right. Like I haven't been showing up. Give me another shot. And then he was fantastic after that. I mean, a lot of what I do and why I like to keep it small ish is I can address these problems and be like, Hey, what is going on with you, my dear? Why aren't you sure? You know, you are not, you are, if this isn't a priority in your life right now, that's fine. But we need people who it is a priority in their lives because we can't have a no show like that kind of thing. And I get great responses from that because the kids need a mentor too. And all of them are young. So for some of them, this is their first jobs or their first meaningful job, you know, McDonald's or whatever isn't necessarily meaningful to them. So then with older adults, Oh, Mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm thinking about what is a typical scenario where you go and help? Like, is it, it's typical age. Are they trying to get on the internet? If they've got a computer that isn't working, what are kind of the top 
couple things that you get your your teens help seniors with. There's no top couple of things because it runs the gamut. I guess if I had to say the top couple of things, it would just be learning how to use my smartphone or mobile device mm -hmm. um, because it runs the gamut. In the beginning, for some reason, I thought everybody would be interested in learning social media, but that's actually what we get asked about the least. Huh. Um, people want to attach a text, attach a picture to a text. They want to learn how to text. They want to learn how to use WhatsApp and communicate with loved ones in another country for free. Uh, they want to learn how to use Zoom, how to access their local library online, how to social media too, um, how to use their email, how to get rid of spam email and spam messages in their phone. Yeah. You know, and then like, some, some are a little more advanced. Like I want to learn how to move all my, I, I got a new computer. I want to transfer over all my data or I want to learn how to use the cloud more efficiently. You know, so it just, it runs the gamut. And what would be a typical session? So someone goes to your website and says, I need some help. How long does someone, one of your, one of your teens, typically, they're in the, what, what are the ages for the folks that are your... They run from 15 to 29, actually, now. Okay. So what is, so they go out to, it's been mostly virtual, but let's say, in, in, do they go out in person, they go or virtual, and then they just connect and help with... And, and now it's back to being more in person. Like everyone wants in person and you can't blame them. That's what I would want too if I was getting personal tutoring. But in the places where it's not possible, that's when we go virtual or if people just want to save money. So how it works is somebody con visits our website. Typically, they contact us through our website. You always get a live person. Pretty much, it's always Jillian, my assistant, that answers or talks to them. And we say, what is it? Tell, tell us what you'd like to learn to do. And they say, oh, I'm so frustrated. My daughter got me this freaking phone like five years ago, still sitting in the box, <laughs> you know, or whatever it is. Or I got a new computer. I don't know how my printers are, you know. And, and our whole goal is to empower them to learn the technology at the fingertips. Not to, for me to be like, oh, see, Wes, there, that's all you do. Because that's what we as adult children do to our parents all the time, and it doesn't help anyone. The way to learn is to do it yourself. So we specifically rec like interview for that. Like, do you have the patience and the kindness to repeat something over and over, to let them hold the device while you point and direct? And so they will say, you know, it's a mobile device, so I can come to your office, or I can meet you at the senior center, or I can meet you at the library. Or if they're like, it's my home computer, or I just don't want to go out, it's my iPad, but I don't want to go out, then can you come to me? And that's when one of our older teen years, we have teen years in their 20s, will go to the client's home and help them. And typically, the, so a client will pay, what, by, just by the hour? So 15 bucks, yeah, 20 bucks? The, it's by the hour. And then after the first hour, it's like in 15 minute increments. Um, so wow. that they don't have to so pay a whole new second So it's not super expensive. Hour. No, not at all. It's $39.95 per hour to start. Like a virtual coaching session is $39.95 an hour. And then $10 more if you want a home. I'm sorry, if you want to visit in our office, because there's always supervision in our office. So it can be like a 16-year-old teen year. And then if you need someone to come to your home, an over 18 year old teen year, then it's $10 more than that. So that would be $59.95 plus tax. Got it. So we're talking about people, your typical uh, client of teen years is not even spending a hundred bucks. Right, right. Kind exactly. of under a hundred dollars. to Yes, to, sir. And do they, how often, how often do you see repeat where people say, I need you to come back once or twice, Pretty three times? Pretty often. I would say at least 35% at least. Wow. Yeah. And it's cool because it's never about the same thing. They're like, thank you so much. You know, Chris helped me tremendously with this. Now I want to learn how to do blank. You know, like that kind of thing will happen. I want to learn how to sell on Amazon. I want to... I want to do a resume online. I want to do this or that. Yeah, it's far beyond just cell phones, right? It's like, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's I want to sell something on eBay. I want to do something on Amazon. I want to have, uh, there, there's, it really does, uh, it really does run the gamut from, and, yeah, and, it does. and how do you test the skills of the people that are interviewing you? Because it's a huge, it's a broad base. Yeah. You know what? It's so cool because I don't really have to. So you and I, Wes, tech savvy as we, we may be at our ages, there still there's teens that are going to know more about some stuff than us. Like Snapchat would be an example where they probably sure. know more than us. And so the average, so our client, I think the average age client is 67, but it mm -hmm. might be 73. I remember seeing two different averages. Um, but they run our client ages run from 50 to literally from 50 to 103. I mean, that's the, <laughs> that's the range of the people we've helped. Yeah. No, so where do we, I was thinking about the breadth of, you know, if you're, you're 21 year old, uh, 
senior or t- teen, year, teen, they they are just they're very tech savvy. So even if they yes. might not know something, they could learn it quickly in order to go teach. Yes, it. exactly. And one of the things I always tell them when we do an orientation, because I don't train them, I don't we don't train them in any software or hardware. We're like, what do you come in knowing? And usually they're like, well, I already have an Android phone and I'm comfortable with Windows computers. Perfect. Then they're an Android Windows coach. If they already have an iPhone, Apple computers, etc. And then some are super tech savvy, like they're in the robotics club and they're familiar with both, fluent in both. <laughs> they could just do anything, yeah. Yeah, and so, but what I always tell them is don't feel, because the teens are scared. They're like, what if they ask me something I don't know? And I'm like, don't you worry about that. You say, you know what? I've never done A, B, and C before an Android phone. Why don't we Google it? You know, do you know how to Google? Google is like the library of the world for my generation. Let me show you how to Google. And so I'm like, you tell them if you're stumped. And and always the older person is like, oh, yay, you don't know how to do this either. This is fun. Like, we're both learning. That's awesome. And then, so uh, when do we stop? So I, I did it. One of my favorite podcasts last year was uh, a guy named Tom Vanderbilt who wrote a book called Beginners. And the book was all about how as we age, we feel as though we have to immediately be good or quickly be good at something or else we don't want to do it or we don't even attempt it. Whereas yeah. when we're little kids, we'll do like a hundred different things. Yes, right? that fear of failure. Yeah. And as we get older, we get more, we get more narrow and like, oh, well, I'm good at this kind of thing. I'm not going to even try this. And so it's an kind of this really, to me, an interesting concept of trying to break out of that human mode of getting older and only doing the things I already know how to do. And I don't do anything new. And so the whole concept was, I want, I want to be a beginner. I don't care how old I am. So I think my question would be, when do we, is there a specific age or is it a mentality? Like, when do we start getting bad at tech? When do we stop learning tech? And I guess the answer, you maybe have answered it with like, anytime over 50, that's your client base. Oh, yeah, I would say that. And I think it also depends on what you want to learn. Like people my age don't even want to admit that they need help. Like I have countless friends who have said, honestly, I need a teen year, but that would be weird, huh? And I'm like, no, that wouldn't be weird. I had a teen year over to wipe my computer because I didn't want to go through all that. Could I have done it myself? Yes, but he, he can do it in a second. I'd rather him do it, you know? Like, so there's everyone in my opinion could use some tech help. But to answer your question, I think, I think because of what I said earlier about how personal technology has changed more than the last 10 years than the previous 50, that's what has created this huge rift in the last 10 years, especially last 20 years, between seniors not having no idea what we're doing because it's like now all of a sudden everybody has a smartphone, not just a cell phone. Everyone has a smartphone. Everyone's texting. No one wants to talk on the phone. Uh, everyone's streaming movies. No one's just like, you know, it's 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 a whole different world. And so there's and, just And it happens so quickly, right? I mean, yeah, Disney, yeah. Disney came out with streaming and they had 100 million people within a year. It's crazy. Yes, yes. So um, what about... Is there a way our audience, and maybe it's not our audience as much as maybe it is their their parents, their parents can learn technology better themselves, or are there other companies like Teen Years? Like, I don't know of them. I know Geek yeah. Squad. Yes, right. Me too. <laughs> I know Geek Squad, but I don't know if I want to geek at my house, right? <laughs> By the way, it's the worst branding of all time. I know that geeks are supposed to be good at computers, <laughs> and it's no longer it's no longer geeky to know computers either. So that's they're like right. that's a, that's that's a behind the times name, by the way. Yeah, well, and not only that, but Geek Squad is going to fix the problem for you. They're not going to empower you to learn it. I am very, very big on empowerment, um, mm-hmm. whether it's empowering kids, older adults, anyone, and so. If I want to learn quantum physics, Wes can't very well do it for me and show me what he did. Like he has to show me and I do it myself, which is why I'm so big on that. Geek Squad doesn't do that. Um, And Geek Squad, I'm sure they have amazing people, but they've been around a long time. So definitely that's who our clients know about. And they're like, you know, I pay this much money a month and it's $160 to have them come out to my home. And I'm like, wow, is that what people will pay? But that's not my experience of what people will pay. And also they, they may not, they may assume that with teens and young people, they're not going to get the same quality. Whereas I argue what they would get better. In fact, Mm -hmm. I think our kids are even paid better, but, um, but I, I would say what they miss out on is the empowerment of li- literally learning to do it yourself and also that intergenerational connection. One of the things that clients have told us in the past are there's like, I don't even have any young people in my life. I never had kids. I don't have grandkids. I'm not around teenagers. I assume all of them want to be Kardashians. Like there's, 
there's so much stereotype <laughs> out there because we live in an ageist society, you know, like youth and beauty are prioritized, not our elders. They start getting invisible as we get older. And so what is ageist for you? It's funny. We were just talking about a- ageist. Uh, do you think of it? What, what is ageism to you or eight? Yeah. Well, I'll give you an example of what it sounds like. <laughs> Wes, he can't do that. He's old. God, leave him alone. Mm-hmm. Well, what does she know? She's she's 15. What the hell does she know? Okay, so you know, it can go either way. So ageism way. is like, it's, you're basically stereotyping someone because of their age. Young, yes. old, middle. I got it. Okay. okay. Yes. And we also re- reinforce that, by the way. When people like our age say, well, I mean, I know I'm dating myself, but, or, well, this probably happened before your time, but like, just don't even say that. Just look, mm. you, let's say you like the Rolling Stones. I don't, but like, let's say you like them. <laughs> you would just be like, oh, this is a great, this is a great album. This is a great song. What do you I know, look like, like a Rolling Stones fan? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to think of something old. God, you're like, so uh, ageously, mu- you're musically right. ageous. I'm, God, I'm genre, z- genre ageism. Um, well, my, <laughs> my point is, so, so ageism is just, it's, the same as racism or sexism. It's when we assume like things defer to us. We're the cool ones. We're in that sweet spot of being, you know, young adult or whatever it is we are or assuming other people can't do things because of their age or they're not cool because of this or that or whatever it is. And it happens to both generations, but it particularly happens to older adults. The, uh, <laughs> it's, it is funny. The, um, what, what do you think the big, you had mentioned your scoring where you ask your group, you, you ask your clients to score you for te- in 10 different ways or uh, yeah. kind of quality control. What have you learned, learned from that, that they say to you about what you, ha- what you help on? Oh, um, one woman, when I met with her after a coaching session, it was a first time teenager. She was crying and crying. And she said, I, I don't even know how to begin to express this, this overwhelm of emotion. She said, um, from the moment I walked in, you all welcomed me. You didn't make me feel stupid or condescended to. Um, all I wanted to learn how to do was do my boarding passes online because I see my sister twice a year in Minnesota. And here was this girl not only helping me, but very kindly, very patiently walking me through each step, not doing it herself, letting me touch the buttons no matter how long it took me, had to ask her the same question six or seven times. Um, she's like, I, I just don't think you realize for people like me who have no family, who have no young people in their lives, what you're doing for us. Like this is this feels life changing. And I'm and I'm just I'm just here to get my boarding passes online. So it was that was an example of a tearful confession given during a survey. But, you know, we've gotten thousands of surveys at this point and I get new ideas on things we could be teaching. Um, we get 99, we get five star reviews all the time and, and we get a lot of what I liked when it was when I started deciphering between them rating the coach and how well they did coaching versus how well they did learning. So I was getting fours out of a scale of one to five for a little while there on coaches. And I was like, wow, but she said he was amazing and she couldn't have had anyone better. I wonder why she gave him a four. And then as I started inquiring more and doing more research, people would say, oh, I gave him a four because I just suck and I, can't, I couldn't learn and I had to ask a million times. And I'm like, oh, well, let, hmm. let's distinguish that then. You thought he was amazing, but you feel like you'd... Because then you start distinguishing like, oh, okay, she has her own um, confidence issues about learning tech. What we have found is people have tons of shame around Around learning tech because I would say our society shames them for not already knowing how to do this stuff, which of course they shouldn't know how to do. They're getting hmm. a cell phone for the first time at 60 or older. Um, it is funny. It's one of these things. It's like a acceptable um, nudge, kind of like uh, it's almost like, oh, you don't know how to use computers. And I, it's like, oh, you don't know computers. It's almost like a funny way of saying you're kind of dumb or you're right. kind of old. You're kind of out and, of it. But yeah. it's also kind of it's almost acceptable because there's almost something about how I notice this as, as we all get older, that even my, my friends, my age range, mid forties, mid fifties, they'll say, I don't know how to use that, that tech. So it's almost like a, it's almost a badge of honor too. Like I don't even need tech. So it is a really interesting thing that you're solving for. How big do you think the teen years can get? I mean, you've got your mom, so you don't, it's not like you want to work a hundred hours a week, but how big does this get? And how do you, how do you do this? How do you become a small giant? Honestly, Wes, I think every community in the world could benefit from this. We have 22 tribes in Pueblos in New Mexico, 23 actually with Navajo Nation. And, and, 
I've certainly had people from from their areas be like, ah, our elders are really against more technology. But if you could just come and maybe give a presentation, you know, I've seen it in across our cultures everywhere. And it goes from low income to high income. It goes across racial divides, across gender divides. Um, every time there's a national press piece on teen years, inevitably people reach out from, I'm in New Jersey, I need a teen year. Hi, can you send them to my house? How do I get Netflix on my TV? Or hi, I'm a kid in Chicago. I wanted to become a teen year. How do I do that? Or, you know, that's, it goes on and on. So that's why Wait, I'm so, like- I, So if, if, if 30 people contact you the minute this podcast goes yeah. live, you'll have the resources to be able to do that? Well, I have the resources to do it virtually. I sure, think sure. that if we wanted to be in person everywhere, that would obviously require sort of a little army of young, teens and young adults in every city. And so then you're talking about like an Uber, which what I think what I would like probably is to extend it as a nonprofit if it were to scale, because it's not the kind of thing that I should think should be in a competitive sort of capitalist for profit competitive market. I First of all, it, it just doesn't generate, maybe it would, I guess, if it scale, generate the income like that. But I'm m way more interested in helping people than I am about, you know, becoming a billionaire. And so the more people we can help, the better. Yeah, you're so mission driven that that's why this is going to continue to work. I mean, that's really, it's rare to find a business that's really driven by a, a vision, uh, particularly the one that, that you see that so clearly how did not not that this has anything really to do with it, but just it, it, it um, you were in film before this. What were you? What did you do in f film? Yeah, you were a Holly. You were a Hollywood exec. What were? You, what did you do? And I was working in the studios from went from college onward. So I interned at Sony Studios and TV development. I was in the global management training program at Warner Brothers Studios for two years. Then went to New Line Cinema, Ascent Media. But it was really more like you know, if you take out the cool industry that is the entertainment industry. It was, it was a lot of, um, you know, it was, it was an office job. Um, it was like any other job. It was, yeah, there was like, no, like. Yeah, that's what like... I try to tell people because they'd be like, oh my God, how can you leave Warner Bros? And I'd be like, I mean, it's cool. It is. You, I worked on this, on this, on the lot where the sets were and stuff. But it, you know, even that after a while, you're like, what am I, what greater purpose am I adding to this? <laughs> am I serving this world? Like, I think there, I think I always had a desire to just really be helping people. But I also wanted to, you know, I grew up. We did not grow up with any money. And my dad died when I was young. My mom was a cashier at Walmart and had all five of us kids. And this was in the small Hispanic town in New Mexico. And so I just grew up being like, I don't want to be dependent on a guy and I want to make, I want to make good money so that I can take care of myself and stuff. So, so I, as I started going into that industry and started making more money, I was like, this is not like, this is not fulfilling though, mm -hmm. you know? And then I um, uh, started dating someone who was back home at my home state in New Mexico, eventually, uh, back. Yeah, I could go on, but that's so in the film industry for a while. But like, I, nothing to me that was like, I was running independent filmmakers programs for the governor's office when I came back to New Mexico. So different areas. But now you found this real passion. You're helping connect. I, it, it's really beyond just tech, right? You're you're helping, even if it might only be an hour. You're connecting at least a little bit of inter intergenerational connection, which is something our society doesn't seem to have a lot of today. Yeah, I always say. Honestly, Wes, I always say the main service we provide is not tech. It's not tech support. It is human connection. And hmm. the level to which we recognize that and stay true to that is the level to which we continue to succeed. And you say this beyond just introducing a, a, a teenager and a senior. You're talking about connecting seniors to the world. This, the, yes. the, participating back into the world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, for example, my mom, Wes, did not know that music apps were a thing. Like, she loves the Beach Boys, right? And I'm like, Mom, you know, you don't have to, like, we can get you that CD player or, like, whatever, but why don't, why don't I show you how to just, I'll, I'll put Pandora on your phone, you know, it's free, and you can just kind of put on Beach Boys Radio, and then you'll get that plus some other. And so I introduced her to that. Um, uh, some of the older adults, like, I'm like, let's teach them about how to map, let's have them use their mapping app. Like, I think about the stuff that I use most often, which is music, mapping, whatever else. Um, how, how, like, if you really love, let's say, New York Times or something, you can read it on their app and it's more user friendly than going to the website. Yeah, and that's yeah. even if they use their phone in that way, because most of them don't. They just have these ginormously priced thousand dollar whatever iPhones, but they don't use it for anything other than making calls. 
And so I'm like, this is like your brain. You know how we don't, we use a small percentage of our brain? And th that's how these computers and smartphones are. There is so much more they're capable of, and none of us know how to use it all. But there's, you can never stop learning. Never, ever stop learning. Well, listen, I, I wish you guys continued success and growth and